before. Before we came here, before time began, before we fell asleep, before we descended into the abyss of hell, before we put on this flesh and blood body, before we thought of ourselves as separate from each other, before we thought of ourselves as separate from God, before this, we were God. Imagine this. Millions of grains of sand in the top of a spiritual hourglass. This is the heavenly realm, the glorified state. Each individual grain of sand loved the other grains more than its own self, without partiality. They had no selfishness, resentment, greed, anger, or hatred of any kind. None of them thought about themselves, but only the well-being of the mass. The mass was the collective consciousness and form of all the grains of sand combined together. They all had direct communication with each other, making it possible to coordinate plans for creating life together. The very love and unity of the mass was life, and the mass had a name, God. Now inside the density of the mass there was moisture. This moisture held the mass together, and the sands loved the moisture more than life itself. The moisture was also the central intelligence that directed the sands, giving each one a specific task in the creative process, and the moisture had a name, the Spirit of God. One day, the Spirit had an idea. His idea was to create a place that was exactly the opposite of the supreme existence that he and the sands had created. Instead of light, there would be darkness. Instead of peace, there would be turmoil. Instead of kindness, there would be selfishness. Instead of unity, there would be division. Instead of joy, there would be sorrow. Instead of love, there would be hatred. In this lower place, the bottom of the hourglass, there would be sickness. Also, the truth that everything is God would be looked upon as heresy and blasphemy, and everyone would view themselves as separate from each other and separate from God. They would also be finite instead of infinite. Now this idea excited the sands and they began to vibrate with ecstasy because they did not know what death was. What did the Spirit have in mind? What was this plan? First, said the Spirit, I will call this place man or flesh. Man will be empty and void and we will make him the opposite image of everything we are. We will also need a measuring stick to keep a record of everything that happens in this realm. So the Spirit created time. Then he said to the sands, We will make this realm slowly disintegrate, wasting away, empty, self-destructing, hopeless, and frustrating. I will send each one of you into this place to take specific roles, both noble and ignoble, and you will learn to appreciate what love is by experiencing what love isn't. I will give you spiritual amnesia so you cannot remember who you really are. Then at a set place, at the end of this time, I will remind you of whom you once were. I will bring you all into remembrance that you are God. 
then I will deliver this place through you. Well, this excited the sands even more, and they were eager to do their part. So the Spirit said to them, Let us make man in our image. Who will go for us, and whom shall we send? Then a single sand stepped forward and said, here I am, send me. So the Spirit said to the single sand, Your name will be Jesus, which means Savior, and you will prepare the way for me, the entire mass. You will be the embryo of those who will deliver man. You will be the example that will be set for all of the sands that will follow you. You will not be the light alone, but you will bear witness to the light, the entire mass, the full-grown man-child. For greater things shall the mass do. They will be the ones to actually fill the lower part of the hourglass. You, however, will be a pattern to show them what their purpose there is. They will then follow you into the abyss. Then the Spirit said to the mass, Go and fill man, the bottom of the hourglass, and subdue it. You, the mass, will be cast as bread upon the waters of flesh, but after many days you shall return to me, and time will not be needed any more. And God said to the sands, Arise, O God, and judge the earth. As sands in the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. Eye has not seen, nor has ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for him. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. For God is able to do exceedingly abundant above all we can ask or think. The story I just told you came directly from the throne of God.